were going to get paid less than 100 cents on the dollar. So there were some savings there. Yeah, I hope, I hope the uh, bankruptcy details. I hope the vendors didn't get hurt. You know, well, they the vendors got delayed. Not so much yeah. as they were getting a haircut. They okay, were good. more delayed. Well, than anything else. Mike, this is a, an important question because when you, when you bring up municipal investing with clients, uh, one thing they always fire back on is is that you know some of these organizations, counties, uh, different institutions owe a lot of money in the future. I inclu included corporate bonds in that as well, um, and everyone right now is talking about the unfunded pension liabilities of of all these institutions, um, Calsters, Calpers, um, to name a few. But uh, I think. You know, we've seen San Jose recently in San Jose pass some pension reform initiatives. And I read in the journal and other places that's happening on the East Coast and many places. Can you explain, you know, what's going on here from a pension reform standpoint, how that affect municipal investing and what the future looks like? Yeah, well, tr try to be brief about it. It can go on for a bit. But in California specifically, if you look at the major uh, pension plans at the state level, they're actually in relatively good shape. I mean, in spite of the headline news, and, and yet you kind of have to ignore the absolute number of uh, unfunded liability, but on a percentage basis, you know, yes, it used to be closer to 100 a decade ago, but now where you have, you know, the, like the teachers roughly about 70, 75% funded, um, and then the employee unions over 80% funded, that was as of 2010. You know, those numbers are not nearly as onerous than if you look at some other states like Illinois and some of their major uh, unions that are between 30 and 40 percent funded. So when you talk about seriously underfunded, it's still at the stage where it's manageable. It's, it's not very helpful for the overall state budget because the, the, the liability is growing. And so it's more important that it's attacked now rather than later. And it looks like you know, some steps have been taken recently. I know there was some legislation that was sent on um, in Sacramento that is really geared towards impacting new hires by increasing their employee contributions or developing that hybrid defined benefit plan, defined contribution plan, right. or just increasing retirement ages. The tools to help um, cure some of these issues are in place, not just in California, but I think we've talked about it before, is that it's spreading across the country um, where I think at not just the state but also the local level, they are getting that religion that it has become a huge problem that can't be put off way into the future. And again, from a bondholder's perspective, it is manageable in California in how much they owe every year for their annual required contributions to the employees' union for their retirement and for their health care. They, they should but just be like the... Be uh... a real serious and growing problem from a bondholder's perspective if something's not done about it anytime soon. Yeah, and that would probably end up being reflected <laughs> in the ratings and in the bond, bonds prices or yields. Yeah, Mike, we should just have the uh, municipalities do what the federal government does, just print more money. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're, they're not allowed to. Okay, Mike, uh, thank you so much for joining us here in the studio. That was awesome. We're uh, talking with Mike Dawson, who is quite the expert um, as a portfolio manager for MFS mutual funds, specifically in the municipal bond department. We're going to have to have you on again someday, okay? Well, no, I appreciate it. And again, a shout out to my mom, Pat Dawson, a longtime California <laughs> municipal bond investor up there in San Rafael. And of course, I got to give a shout out to my boy, Cubes Bullion. Okay. Nice. All right. Thanks again, Mike, for joining us. Okay. Welcome. You're listening to the best of investing on News Talk 910. You know our show. It's where we present valuable information about real estate, the financial markets, and other economic business of the day. For those of you listening for the first time, here's our format. A few guys sitting around a bar talking business with you, the audience, listening in. I'm your host, Edward Brown, and I'm pleased to have as my co-host Mark Hahn from Pacific Private Money, California's fastest growing private lender, and Robert Schiff of RPM Mortgage. And today's trivia theme is shows on cable TV. I thought that was kind of interesting. Well, I'll do good on that one. You, you will do well. I know you will. Um, don't forget to email us questions at edward at bestofinvesting.com and listen for your questions on the air. We're also on television, Comcast 26, on Saturdays at noon. Now, today's special guest is Mark... Macalonan, I got that right. All right, <laughs> that's and to say. he's a business owner who's going to share some stories with us about how to deal with employees and problems that uh, come up with owning a business. Mark, welcome to the Best of Investing. Thanks for having me. All right, so you and I were talking one time about the fact that you're a business owner, you have a number of employees, and sometimes you run into conflict 
resolution issues. Yep. Give us an example. Well, uh, uh, there's not a whole lot of examples, hopefully, on, on a day-to-day -day yeah. thing, but, <laughs> right. uh, you know, guys uh, with 34 employees, and it's a physical environment down at uh, wow. my tire business, uh, they bump, they get in minor conflicts, so, you know, arguments are one end of it, and uh, and it's gone physical before, so. Uh, oh, that's not good. That's never a good thing. That's somebody's going to be in trouble somewhere, whether it's me with a lawsuit or, uh, or somebody's uh, employment terminated. Well, so, I, yeah, it was, uh, it was just me and, and my secretary one time. We got a little physical. She beat the crap out of me. <laughs> <Yeah. I'm just laughs> Secretaries will do that. Yeah. So, so how have labor laws, uh, the changes in labor laws over the last 10 years, Mark, how have they affected the way you run your business and what kind of changes have you had to kind of make given well, that you have so many employees? Yeah, they, they, they have changed and really what's changed is the, the compliances. So you need to tell your employees through posting bulletins on the walls and posters of all their rights and uh, that's a good thing uh, it tells them where to go if they get hurt it tells them uh, who to call if anything isn't right with your business so what you're doing is you're giving them information that will help them sue you yeah you probably had to remodel the shop to add extra wall space for all the posters. Yeah. <laughs> right right it, move a couple gumball machines out of the way and uh, no but it has to literally be posted in their lunch area if they're lucky enough to have one and they do uh, so you know they sit down and you get you get 15 guys staring at a poster of all the things that could be wrong whether it's uh, toxins, which we're, we're clean on that, or um, or just employee abuse or not getting their 10-minute breaks. And there's attorneys' phone numbers, doctors' phone numbers, <laughs> Latino attorneys' phone numbers. So, and then these guys also are are soliciting your employees if they're, especially if you have some Latino guys. Um, and uh, as great a workers as everybody is for me, uh, you know, they are being educated on how to go after their employer if there's any sort of a problem from a need to a, to a fist fight, to an argument, to unfair uh, treatment. Everything's got to be perfectly equal. Wow. Now have your, have your um, like employee handbooks, have they uh, grown in size? I, I saw one uh, not too long ago that was almost like a phone book and I'm thinking who reads those things? No, it's, it's grown from a two-page old school thing back in the 60s, which really was a, a, a nothing to it, to yeah. just like you said, a phone book of, of rules and regulations. And uh, I don't know if anybody's ever really read that thing all the way through. But the thing is, is that you have to have one, right? I mean, isn't that the, the whole idea? Not that you have to. I mean, well, you're not legally hold, required. Hold, hold, hold on. An attorney once told me about these handbooks. He says all you're doing if you have a, a handbook is you're giving a bat to, for them to beat you with. Well, that yes. Was, that's, yeah. That was yeah. my point of having yeah. the thing on the wall. But yeah, exactly that. And then you have to have meetings, of course, your yeah. safety meetings. Meetings and, and things of that nature, uh, and to you know to re-educate them and remind them of go to this handbook, go to the go to the wall charts uh, for anything that might be ailing you or upsetting you. So well, do you have government regulators that come in to make sure all those posters are posted? Yeah, like they, the coffee stains or they they do. No, yeah, well, you don't see the fancy chandeliers at my place, but you will see the coffee stains. <laughs> uh, but uh, that keeps uh, tire prices down. So uh, forgive my 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 sloppy shop. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, no, no. I was thinking coffee stains might obliterate the uh, oh yeah, the journey I to call. Or I could. Yeah. yeah, no, we have employee meetings, and again, it's it's to remind them, and and we have a regulator that comes by through Worksman's Comps, uh, which is the the you know is the catalyst of the whole thing. Um, if you're going to take action against your employer, it's usually through Workman's Comp, and. Uh, and they come and check me out. They look at my my meeting schedules. They look at all my things that are up, as well as just all the safety things, uh, safety OSHA. classes, OSHA, OSHA. OSHA yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So give us an example, because the audience is listening to, on the edge of their seat, waiting to hear oh, so some, sure so, yeah, some of these exciting radio. Yeah, yeah. Well, some of these uh, situations where you've had employees, where you've you've had to actually kind of be, I guess, a mediator. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, where it's especially like, wants your line of work has some uh, hefty tools that <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, really. and some hefty <laughs> guys that go with those tools. Yeah. The you know, and I loved it back in. I've been doing it a long time, but you know, back in the early '70s, it was great. Two guys have a problem. You go, hey, you guys, if you can be back in 20 minutes, <laughs> take it around the back of the building, <laughs> and then one guy would come back with a patch of his hair missing and a, and a black eye, and, and then so we had a new boss. Whoever whoever won that match was the the ruler of that territory. And they got along fine. And they got that. along fine. Yeah. They were best friends, and That's it was right. a handshake, and uh, and it's no like more fights. Playgrounds but, and more kids. Yeah. And it's it's funny, but yeah, uh, there's a, you know one situation, and we handle everything internally, but we actually had one guy uh, call the police as he got in a beef with uh, one of his 
friends and, and his cousin. <laughs> so this uh, six foot tall, good looking Centerville police officer showed up and she got the guys in there and she said, what kind of a sissy are you? Uh, oh, oh, why yeah. don't you call your mommy next time you get in a fight with your cousin? Uh, oh, that's don't great. She goes, I got people laying on the street with stab wounds in here and you're calling me over here because he said, what to you? <laughs> and he said, well, how did it go? And he said, well, I told him to, you know, blankety blank. And she said, okay, you're under arrest. You broke the law. You cannot instigate a fight with profanity and call names. So there is a law for that. So I said, right now, you're the only guy that did anything wrong. Where's the other guy? Well, he left. So, okay, so you're the only guy that's in trouble. You called the police. You broke the law. You you said, you know, whatever they said. Yeah, I don't uh-huh. want to say it on radio. Yeah, but, no, no, no. Uh, and uh, and she chewed him out so bad and humiliated him in front of the other 30 guys that he she basically said, go call your mommy next time you have a That's little, great. Little that fight. is yeah, great. That is I love fabulous. that. Yeah, then it comes back to me and, I, and how I handle it. So I've got to, I've got to take these guys generally one at a time, get their stories. And I'm still old school, so I, I want to give them both the benefit of the doubt and give them an opportunity to keep working because, you know, technically – Everybody is has the right to have a safe working environment, yeah. and that's the big thing. So, uh, as if you can tell them how you're going to make it safer for them, and and you can, uh, you know, discourage any further arguments, things like that. That that's what I do, and I always try to keep the peace. Both guys are still working for me, and oh, good. and they're both still cousins. Are they still cousins? Yeah, by, yeah. <laughs> by blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> One way or another. Yeah. All right, we're going to cut to our uh, first commercial break here, and again, the uh, trivia theme is cable. Uh, shows on cable TV. All right, you ready for this? On T on the TV show Shark Tank, what kinds of sharks are pictured on the show to highlight the show? All right, and we'll be right back. Excellent. That was good. Okay, that was fun, huh? That was easy. Nice and easy. Yeah. Well, it's probably not a sand shark, huh, Mark? I think it's, it's a hammerhead. It's, it's a, a hammer- hammerhead it's a shark. Hammerhead? It's yeah. hammerhead. Very good. Welcome back to The Best of Investing. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with my co-host, Mark Hahn of Pacific Private Money and Robert Schiff of RPM Mortgage. When we cut to the first commercial break, we ask this trivia question. Again, the theme is TV shows on cable TV. Ready? Uh, on the show Shark Tank, what kinds of sharks are pictured on the show to highlight the show? Robert, you have uh, I'm, I'm not real familiar with the show, but I'm pretty sure it's a loan shark. It's a loan shark! <laughs> no, no, that way. <laughs> talking to me yeah <laughs> okay we'll let our guest answer that what's the answer i think it was hammerhead it is hammerhead shark Indeed. very good okay we are in the studio with mark mcalonen that's correct and uh, we've been talking about dealing with employees now one thing i wanted to point out because mark you said that you actually take if you have a situation you might between employees you might take them separately and I was just reading something on the internet, and they, they made a suggestion. They said, don't meet with them separately uh, because you might have each individual tell you the story, trying to you know polarize the situation and you know trying to get see your side. But actually, I think you mentioned that you would meet with them separately and then meet together. Yeah, yeah you, you've got you got your internet answers, and, and then you have yeah. your real life answers. There you so go. <laughs> when two guys are in a beef, the first thing you want to do, of course, is is take them and separate them. Otherwise, you got two guys yelling their point of the story uh, at the same time. So we separate them talk to them, and we rarely have any incidences up at Cambridge. Uh, this is one I can think of in the last 10 years. But separate them, get their stories. Uh, both guys, it's the other guy's fault 100% of the time. You know that going sure. in. How do they want to resolve it? They always want the other guy fired. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's easy for me. Maybe that's impossible for me. Uh, and then you bring them back together and say, this is how we have to make this work. This is a, this is a team, and I run it like a football team. You know, this is this is a team. So this guy has got your back. Uh, he, if you wouldn't be doing what you're doing unless he's blocking for you, so to speak. So um, get the guys back together, make them realize it's a team group, make them realize they're both going to go. Uh, and again, it's how everybody else is looking at you and how they perceive how you've handled the situation. If you do nothing, uh, it's the worst thing you can do. Exactly. So. Well, that part, the Internet did agree with you okay, on. Okay, great, great. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Yeah. yeah, they also had said that uh, don't believe for a moment that the only people who are affected by the conflict are the participants. So that's a good point. I mean, yeah. if the um, other employees see how you handle it, they're yeah. going to have a lot of respect for you. And well, exactly. Or they're not going to follow the same suit. They get in a beef with the guy. They know if they've uh, you know, pushed him or whatever the situation is. That's a no-no, and uh, and here's how it happens. So basically, how you handle those things, you always handle the warning, a written notice to, to each guy, and then usually what you should do is suspend them. 
So a suspension gets a message across to them, and, and the warning notice makes it legal that uh, you've warned them, and you know three warning notices, and, and time's up. Has that changed lately? Is it harder to fire someone today than it was five or ten years ago? Oh yeah, I mean you can, you you fire a guy, you get a guy that steals from you, and uh, and you fire him. Um, he is entitled to things. Unemployment's one of them. You you lay a guy off and he has a hard time fighting for for unemployment or or if they if they quit because of any reason they have to go home to be at home with their children in a, in a, in a secretary point of view um, they have a harder time getting unemployment than the guy you fired but it, it there always is a, a fallback uh, if you fire a guy and, and we haven't had any of that going on our employees have stayed with us forever I get guys there 52 years but uh, wow. and, and, oh my and, gosh! Yeah, wow. and right on down the line. That's how old I am? Exactly. Guy's so, 120. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but literally, and then, and then you have uh, you have my new guys that stayed. I really can't think of anybody that, that I've had to had to fire. You know, even, now let me ask: you, Is a, a lot of that have to do with uh, pre-screening when you hire them, or I mean, you know, I, I know you've got a great organization. That's why I wanted to have have you on the on the show, but. Um, you know, not everybody has employees who have been with them for a really long time. So, what do you attribute that to? How do you, how do you keep employees for a long time? Give them more money. No, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, no. I know money is only a small motivating factor. No, you know, everybody has to feel uh, part of the team and and, uh, and and valuable. I think is a key thing. So, I truly depend on those guys from the bottom up, and the guys in the back shop are the guys that are really making us or breaking us. Um, our prices are low. That message is out there. Um, the the service and turning cars around and, and keeping those guys going and, and the